welcome to this breakdown of a reflection nebula animation that I recently did for my good friend reflection nebula uh, if you haven't seen the video uh, I will play it for you quickly Yeah, that's the video. Uh, I recently uploaded it and I thought it might be interesting to do a little breakdown of how this whole thing came to be, really. Uh, I'm just gonna uh, go through it very quickly and uh, address a few things. So, uh, obviously, you can see that this is a volume, we have some space going on and then there is like small little details and all the things going on until we see the actual logo reveal uh, by the way the sound was done by reflection nebula reflection nebula is a one-man band my good friend that I have been watching over for a while he has quite a few releases so do check him out at reflection nebula.bandcamp.com really cool music if you're into space kind of stuff uh, a bit dark cinematic stuff he does incredible shit anyway let's get into it so yeah uh, before I started doing this project I wanted to do um, kind of a deep space nebula render for a while however I found it quite difficult before mainly uh, because I didn't couldn't find that much information really online about how to get the proper nebula look and also I didn't want to just go and buy uh, off-the-shelf ready VDBs uh, or you know other, otherwise known as uh, volumes uh, for this because I wanted to make my own really uh, but because I'm kind of uh, dumb and I don't know Houdini um, and I also don't have the lines license for X particles whatever the newest one is uh, I think it's XP what is it for uh, because the price for those are just getting completely ridiculous I was kind of feeling a bit stuck um, so it took me a while to realize that uh, basically there is a great tool called Embergen Ta -da! and being an Octane user myself uh, I went to Otoy and because I am paying for my Octane subscription already and if you are paying for your op Octane subscription uh, like I do for, for example I have a Cinema 4D plugin for Octane you can go to downloads over here in your profile and you know just as you can choose uh, Octane Render for whichever application you are using the plugin in if you just scroll down you can find Embergen FX and also World Creator these two companies have actually recently joined Otoy and now are releasing their um, their uh, software under you know under Otoy which is really cool so everyone who is uh, doing the subscription for the plugin or uh, the standalone uh, you guys now have access to Embergen and World Creator which is awesome so go ahead and download Embergen FX from the Otoy uh, when you're gonna open it first time it's gonna ask for your credentials such as username and password and then you can use it uh, which is incredible now again if you have been living under a rock uh, Embergen is um, a real-time fluid simulation which kind of sounds nuts right like I remember back in the days fluid simulations were incredibly costly and it took fucking long time to get anything decent looking going and look at that now it's just all on GPU and looking pretty fucking sharp um, so anyway just before we get into Embergen let's talk a little bit about nebulas 
Now if we go on Google and type Nebula and look at some of those fuckers, they are incredible really. Um, they're all kinds of weird shapes and sizes. They are kind of some collections of gas and stardust and all kinds of amazing space shit which my little human brain is not able to comprehend. But basically when I look at them, they are like a multicolored kind of like a smoke clouds or something. So there is really no um, no way you can go wrong with like, you know, doing doing a couple of smoke sims. Some of them are like just completely nuts, really. Um, I wanted to go for something kind of more like this, but I wasn't quite happy with the kind of, I don't know, with the, the overall shape of this one. I wanted to have a little bit more kind of like defined edges like there are here but give it more of a shape of the so, so, so something like a circle um, so yeah I kind of like had a look at different kind of nebulas and then I went on Instagram and Pinterest and checked what other people were doing with um, you know simulating space uh, and then I did a lot of trial and error and now I'm gonna show you so you don't have to anyway so this is Embergen I'm not gonna go through all the basics of how to use Embergen. There's plenty of tutorials online you can find, but I'm gonna go through certain uh, notes which you might need to adjust just to get more or less decent looking uh, nebula. So if you go into file and open project, uh, I'm gonna say no. Uh, you have all this example project so if you don't know where to start you can literally just go and open any project and like check what uh, what they have been doing to get the results that they've got which is really cool so for example I don't know let's check the space gate for for one moment and it actually like loads this sort of like a space gate looking thing and look at that fucking insane right like all real-time 3d simulations of fluids insanity craziness amazing shit uh, but that's not what we're here for um, there is actually a nebula number 73 so let's open that one and it just you know does this weird thing and it's kind of cool you know so you can pause it any time Bam, you already have a VDB smoke simulation that you can export and you can use it as is if you like that kind of shape or any of those. That's it. Nebula basically is the, you know, the cloud which is kind of like frozen in space. Uh, so it doesn't really move that much. I mean, you can make it move if you would want to, but it doesn't really move that much uh, because, you know, uh, in space there is no wind to move it and it's actually such a giant clouds when you look at those pictures you know if these are stars and stars are massive then we're talking massive 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 size of the cloud really um, so yeah anyway when I was doing a sim when I was doing a sim uh, in Embergen I kind of had an idea that I, you know, like I said, I wanted to go through the nebula. So I wanted to have like a, a hole in, in the middle and kind of like go inside and then have the logo be revealed almost like at the bottom of that cloud. And I wanted that cloud to be pretty big and also like quite detailed, as you can see. Um, so there's like when you go close to it, it doesn't get like all weird and Voxel voxelated is that the word voxelated or voxelized I don't know um, so yeah because if we start zooming in on this one you can see that it's kind of loses the details already which is fine we're gonna fix that um, but you know I'm not gonna go through every single setting that I did I'm just here to stir you in the right direction so okay 
So right now it seems that it, it's being emitted through a sphere and let's check. Yep, it is emitted through a sphere and you know, I think for my purposes I was thinking that Taurus is probably gonna be the best one because it's kind of like has this donut shape anyway so yeah boom and look at that just you know just by changing it to Taurus I'm already getting in that kind of hole that I needed now the first problem that I'm encountering straight away is that you know my bounding box and by the way if you don't see the bounding box you can just click on hide bounds and show bounds uh, so yeah, my bounding box is too small for this guy. Uh, it's been being cut on the edges and we definitely don't want that. So I'm going to go into simulation and increase the maximum bounds. So I'm going to increase it maybe slightly by to eight. Don't want to go too crazy because that might start slowing down your computer a lot. And I'm going to click apply new resolution. Uh, you can see that bounding box has been expanded quite a lot and you can see that, yep, it is already affecting the frame rate. Okay, not bad. Now, of course, you know, this side is being smashed into into the bounds, but it's okay. Let's say if I'm interested, you know, to go with a camera from somewhere like here, I'm fine. I'm not gonna see that side. And this side looks fine. Like, even though it's being touched um, by the bounding box here, I don't mind it because I'm probably gonna be with the camera somewhere around here anyway um, so yeah this is not bad uh, I'm gonna go from the beginning again reset the sim and I'm gonna pause it somewhere yeah this is pretty good um, then really all I was doing here I was just playing around with what was I playing around with? With vorticity, with force, and some wind, turbulence. So I went ahead and adjusted a couple of those settings until I was getting what I kind of liked. And I think I'm just gonna um, go back to the bounds being smaller so I can keep the better performance for the time being. So let's see. Yeah, this is this is nuts, man. This is crazy. So yeah, basically it's very nice um, to just go around and play because it depends what you are kind of looking for. There is no really right numbers that I was just gonna give you, and you know it's gonna work perfectly. You just need to spend some time and play with those settings, and it's fun anyway you know like how much vorticity do you want you know, how much do you want your smoke to be like twisting around you know if I'm gonna remove the vorticity completely how is that gonna look you kind of like you can feel like a crazy scientist anyway like you can see like I removed vorticity and it became almost like very I don't know flaky almost like feather like so really just like go with what you think looks right and you're gonna be good so once I had my uh, simulation in the right place where I want it, uh, there is a export VDB uh, section here. And you basically just say, where do you want to export your VDBs? This is your file name and where do you want to export it? You just do the folder. Um, you know, you can just, let's say, go on a desktop and Let's say I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm just gonna call it test, just for the time being. And I'm gonna call it test cloud. There we go. And t -t 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 number of frames, obviously specify how many frames you want to export. And I think, I think that's it. Oh yeah, by the way, if you want like a higher resolution in your uh, in your simulation, um, the setting that you are interested in is uh, voxel size, so and voxel count. So, kind of the bigger the number of the voxels, the kind of the higher the resolution is gonna be. Um, 
and it kind of automatically adjusts the bound size you can see that now my performance is getting really really slow I'm getting kind of like shitty free frame rate <coughs> but the cool thing is that now when I'm like zooming in I'm getting much much more details and that's what you want if you want to be very close to your volumes you want a higher voxel so, uh, voxel count basically if you don't know what voxels, voxels are like 3D pixels, almost like uh, little cubes that these things are made of. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, once you are ready, you can cl click on export VDBs and you'll see that this thing becomes yellow and it's kind of going to go through your sim frame by frame and export those, uh, the simulation. Um, probably wasn't a good idea for me to put those voxels so high because it's gonna take a while now but I'm gonna pause and come back to you when it's done and now let's go and check how the Cinema 4D file was set up all right here we are in my Cinema 4D file and let's have a look at how this thing is actually set up uh, it's actually a pretty simple project uh, let me show you so I'm gonna turn off most of these things so we can just look at what matters and I'm gonna turn this one off and I'm gonna also turn off the sky so we can properly have a look at the nebula itself let me just increase the number of samples so it's not that noisy so the nebula that I have been using, the sorry, the neb not nebula, the VDB, uh, it looks kind of like this. You can see that I still kind of made a, a bit of a mistake of having the edges clipped. If you like, if you look from down, you can actually see that there is an angle, a pretty obvious one though. So you know, I wasn't all that you know super attentive to all this um, so it's really depends to you know up to you I was fine with that because I knew that my camera is gonna be going you know from the angle and it's you're not gonna see all that so I'm just quickly gonna show you my settings for the volume itself mm, let's go into the volume so to load the volume into the octane you need an octane volume object which you can find in extensions and see for the octane volume and there you can choose whether it is a generator or a vdp loader in my case it's a vdp loader uh, then i navigated it to where my vdp is and i just wanted it to be static so i used only one frame uh, it's still good to have that sequence because if you're not happy with this frame you can go to the other one and choose the one that you like uh, then in medium this is where uh, the most um, you know important settings are for your uh, VDB I increased density to quite uh, a high number because if your density is low your cloud is going to be very sort of transparent if it's going to be very very high it's going to be super dense so that's why we kind of want it want it uh, quite um, a high voxel count because if it's going to be you know all voxelated now of course if I like zoom in very close you can see voxels like let me just expand this window you can kind of start seeing that here you can see that that this little squares here so this is basically your voxels kind of like a 3d pixels that represent this volume but I don't really actually get that close even though I'm flying through this hole and you know actually I did have a little problem with some voxels being visible so just be careful I had to go ahead and mask it and you know do all kinds of trickery to hide it but oh well I didn't want to redo the like uh, five hour render or something like that so uh, yeah density needs to be high 
volume step length. Uh, it kind of like complements the density. If it's like goes higher, it means it's becoming much more sparse. The more you put it, the more dense uh, basically your thing also becomes. You have to play between those two parameters until you find something that works for you. And again, it's like kind of hard for me to tell you, oh, you know, put this number and it's going to be great because every single volume is going to be different, and that's kind of like the cool part and maybe pain in the ass part a little bit because you kind of have to be a little bit of a experimental scientist with it although you don't need to know much you just play around until something looks nice so yeah that's density and volume step length then uh, you can now use uh, volume displacement in uh, octane uh, and OSL displacement I didn't use that uh, the next things that you are interested in is absorption, scattering and emission. Um, in absorption I uh, set up an RGB spectrum and put it to be like a dark violet. In scattering I put it uh, like this cyan color. And in emission just have it like a bright white color. And that's it, that's my volume. Um, then I created a octane sky object which is uh, just an RGB spectrum and it's set its power to zero uh, so it's completely black mm, and then I started adding some light oh yeah before that uh, just because uh, I wanted to check my camera movement I did create this dummy uh, tours which basically kind of was you know where I had a hole, I put it here just so I can have uh, more or less an idea of how my camera moves. I'm gonna put, put this in pause because when I was animating the camera, I kind of like doing it with the volume was slowing down my, um, my viewport uh, and I wanted to make sure that my camera movement was okay and that I liked the, um, what is it? So when I was setting up my camera movement, I did set up this little donut torus just so I can have like the kind of a block out geometry telling me where it is and where the camera can move uh, and keep my uh, viewport frame rate relatively okay. So that's why I have this torus here. Uh, it's obviously not in the final render, so don't have to worry about that. Once I was happy with my camera, uh, I... Let's see, is it gonna update? Is it gonna update? I'm gonna have to resend it. Uh, let's see. There we go. So, um, yeah, basically, uh, you can see that my uh, nebula has a little bit of uh, an emissive layer in the in the clouds, uh, that's why emission was there. Now, if you don't want your nebula to emit, emit light, you don't have to have um, have the emissive layer, but uh, you know, it kind of adds a nice little uh, light variation to the whole thing. All right, so uh, next I started adding lights because what is a nebula without light? Now here is why having a references of the space nebulas is very good because you can kind of go check what kind of colors do they have and how are they looking? You know, some of them have kind of quite a few colors going on some of them are completely nuts and like have all kinds of colors so it's really up to you what kind of uh, nebula do you want to have uh, but I'm gonna just show you my setup so I have like already sort of like a slightly emissive layer going on uh, on uh, this one and I'm gonna start enabling this lights so first light I have is is this one it's an octane area light uh, with uh, emission of, like, with the emission shape of a disc. If I'm gonna get out of my camera and kind of navigate around, so you can see that 
it lights the whole thing up from the bottom and it actually is quite bright on here but we never do see that what I wanted to have is to have the bottom um, kind of light coming through the hole and kind of giving that middle part being I don't know hot off or, or full of like stars and stuff so I kind of wanted it to be a center of attention in that sense next light is I'm going to disable this one and show you all the lights individually first so disable this one this is uh, my backlight and that's gonna be which one where's my backlight this is my backlight you can see also an area light just lighting it from here uh, then I have another light here so yeah, that light, that backlight is kind of like a cold light. It has uh, like a cold temperature, and this light, you can see, I'm fucking messy. I don't, I don't barely name my shit. So this one is here. It's lighting it from the bottom and gives that a little bit of a warm light just to balance it out. You can disable that. The next light is here, and that's a very sort of very subtle. If I just gonna disable you, you can see that it's barely just kind of like hits those clouds and starts bringing a bit of that kind of green color here. The next ones are gonna be this sphere lights. Now, if you don't know, you can have a sphere lights without having to use like a, an emission texture in Octane. They're not recommended really sometimes. They say, um, people say that basically they can kind of take longer to render. I don't know, I was just fucking lazy, so I did it this way. Uh, if you go to light details, you can set up an area shape, and I just set it up to sphere. Uh, some people say it can produce weird results, but I don't know, fuck it. Uh, so I have a couple of those, one here one here on there you can see and it's there so only when we kind of go further there is going to be light coming from there so that's all the lights let me just enable them one by one i'm going to go back to the first frame uh, and this one so these are all my sphere lights enabled then this is the bottom light then there is this one then there is this one and this one as well so this is all my lights really there's no more lights and um what else yeah the next one was obviously what kind of nebula there is when there is no stars uh, nebulas do have quite a bit of stars as you can see plenty of stars some are huge some are tiny and you want to have that variation um now I thought about making stars in several ways. First, I went ahead and did uh, like a sim with my um, old version of X Particles. Uh, I wasn't that happy about it. I didn't like how it looked, and I was like, you know what? Just fuck it. I'm gonna do it like the cheap way with Octane Scatter. And Octane Scatter is amazing. It's like kind of like Cloner, but renders like a hundred times faster. So I'm just going to disable this and disable my lights and show you. So I have an octane scatter on with a whole lot of spheres, basically just a scatter with sphere and it's been cloned. Now this is why I'm saying it's cheap on the landscape, which I have distorted with like, uh, I think like a random effector and then made a current state to object and use that as my um, kind of cloning surface so this is basically one layer of stars this is like all the small ones you can see there's fuck loads of them like really loads of stars but because they're so small they're not going to be that visible only when you get close but before you know plus there's going to be a cloud um, so yeah this is one scatter and then there's another scatter uh, with big stars so yeah really simple 
super duper simple nothing really complex now I'm gonna enable everything so you can see what's going on and where's my cloud where's my cloud there we go so yeah once I was happy with the look and feel and my camera animation, which did take a while, actually, let me just quickly show you my camera curve. So I'm gonna turn on the donut so you can see what's going on. So I wanted, like, you know, to keep my camera focus in right in the middle, but I didn't want to use a target object because uh, sometimes when you get like close to the target it gets like weird and can like start twisting your camera so I had to kind of you know do that kind of move um, quite a few times to get it right uh, it's not complicated it's just you know just took a while and yeah uh, just as a trick you know don't use too many keyframes when animating camera try try to keep keyframes to a minimum that's how you gonna get like the smoothest motion possible all right so that's the setup now let me show you my render settings mm, let me enable this back and disable the donut cool now for the render settings, I did go ahead and set up quite a few render passes. If I'm gonna enable my render passes, you can see that I have um, I have set up an emission pass. So I have the um, the stars, and that's the uh, emissive pass uh, when you go to Octane Render and you have the render passes here uh, I think it's gonna be in beauty passes yeah that's gonna be the emitters then there is volume then there is volume emission which is also here noise for denoising and post for all the nice uh, natural octane glows and that's really it again super simple in terms of um, render settings, I did use path tracing just because on uh, direct lighting it's nice, but path tracing kind of has the you know the way the light goes and reflects off the things, and I think it looks a bit better. And because I didn't want to wait for it for like a thousand years, I did put my samples on, on like five hundred and you can use the noiser uh, if you want um, and I think for the previewing I did use the denoiser but for render and for rendering from Octane I'm not really using the inbuilt uh, spectral AI denoiser even though it can be really nice however sometimes it can produce um, some weird blobby nasty results uh, yeah there we go you know what I mean like it can make your render look blurred because that's what it does it looks at the vo at the noise and blurs area around you're losing all this really nice detail so I don't really denoise with um, with octane anymore even though like for quick exports I think it's okay for like previewing it with the client so this is the cinema 4d part and now let's jump into after effects here we are in After Effects and here is where the whole thing starts getting assembled. I do have quite a few layers, in fact I do have 34 layers in this main comp. So let's just go through quite a few of them. So after I exported my passes, uh, as you can see I'm like a fucking mess, like this is horrible. Uh, I don't name my layers properly, everything is just everywhere, I don't know, works for me. So this is um, a volume pass, this is what I ex exported. You can see that there is quite a bit of noise. I actually did fuck up where you can see these voxels, but it's fine, I did hide them eventually, but just be careful when you're doing your things, 
you know, when you're getting close, be careful that your voxels aren't, you know, unless you're going for that Minecraft look, which I didn't, and I had to work hard to hide that shit. Anyway, um, yeah, so I just did import all my passes and did a slight color correction in them. Uh, now, because I'm not naming my shit, um, it's going to be a bit tough for me to go through, but hang with me. So, yeah, this is my emission pass. Uh, if I go in effects, there is just a bit of curves on this one. Then there is a, I think it's a post pass. Yeah, that's a post. Basically, with the glows, I did do a bit of color correction on it as well because it was a, you know, not uh, contrasting enough for my look. I like things looking very contrasty. Uh, what is that? That is my emission pass just for the stars. And this is my main pass. So this is main uh, cloud so I did overlay quite a few uh, layers of this passes that I had and on this uh, layer I basically I have my favorite plugin of all time is reduce noise by knit video so yeah I did use this uh, denoise uh, plugin on my main pass if I didn't disable it you can see that you know there is quite a good chunk of noise but with this one it doesn't make it all weird and soapy because I can control how much noise I can reduce uh, let me just show you how the plugin looks so yeah if I would adjust it further it would be like all weird and soapy but I did reduce it to you know small amounts then I have some curves just lifted some uh, reds uh, went down on the greens and lifted the whole RGB then a bit of an exposure which basically just adjusts um, depending on the I think on my time um, which I did just I think it just goes down at the end so we kind of like fade out oh yeah and with the you can see that I had to just crudely mask out those blobby bits so they are not so visible because fuck me they were a pain in the ass so yeah basically just a bunch of layers on top of each other uh, the ones that I exported with a bit of color correction here and there next you can see that there's this quite a large size uh, JPEG that I found online again fucking cheap way of doing things but it works I just found this JPEG which I, uh, is pretty big it's like um, almost 4k and uh, I liked how it looked I liked that it has like this weird shape and quite a lot of details and I thought you know I want to use it for my background and I just ended up using it everywhere really which gave me like a nice uniform look so you can see it's in the back over there it's on the nebula it's fucking everywhere really uh, it has the curves and it has the levels so each one of them is like slightly differently adjusted in terms of hue and saturation and so on and also because I was dumb I um, after I rendered uh, my computer was acting weird on me so I had to reinstall Windows and I lost the original file with my latest camera animation uh, and I basically I couldn't import uh, the AEC project you know how you can export from cinema um, you know the compositing file and everything so if you would like uh, I don't know like if I would go ahead and add what is it uh, compositing external compositing tag and then you know if I would go into save and compositing file and save and 3d data and so on save project file you know the file that I'm that the cinema generates for After Effects uh, I couldn't do that because I was stupid enough to not back up my latest project so I had to be inventive and I did the 3d camera track on my main pass 
So on my main pass, I did a 3D camera track, which wasn't perfect and gave me some weird artifacts, but you know, I managed to smooth it out. So again, back up your files, don't be like me. And yeah, basically I went ahead and put that image fucking everywhere where I thought that was appropriate and not appropriate, just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And kind of like adjusted it as my camera was going through it. Um, I put some nulls um, based on the position where my camera was going through and then parented some some of those uh, JPEGs there, uh, which was uh, very useful to get like that small details here and there. And then for the last part, I used the uh, shockwave from Video Copilot to kind of get that, you know, uh, last sort of blast before we see the logo. And 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 that's it really and then there is the logo itself which is you know nothing uh, spectacular maybe except for the texture which i'm going to talk about in a bit um yeah and then there is a logo reveal basically going in here the logo isn't even uh, like a 3d layer it's um just the basic 2d layer which has a scale animation because I didn't want it to uh, be parented to the camera. I wanted to have uh, kind of the control over the scale and uh, yeah, just individual parameter really. And that's really it. That's all the there is to it. Um, then there is just a bit of color correction here and there, a couple of lens flares. Um, yeah, a couple of lens flares here um, because I did notice that on some of those pictures and some nebula pictures some stars have these streaks and some stars don't so I guess it depends on how bright the star is so I did add it to a few one two three I thought that was nice little touch and uh, also added uh, a glow to I think this one you can see that it just kind of adds a little kind of nice glow to the and if I just go to it, it's basically duplicated layer with um, another great plugin called Deep Glow applied, and kind of like uh, quite transparent, barely on thirty percent, and then it fades out uh, as I don't need it anymore. Um, so yeah, the other kind of important aspect of that thing was, I guess, the texture of the logo and texture is actually a texture of the meteorite stone. I thought the meteorites are just a bunch of, you know, a cluster of rock or some shit. Uh, but, goddamn, meteorite textures are insane. Look at that. Like, they are kind of like crystallized metal, sort of like a triangle patterns. It's fucking weird, but beautiful. And I thought, you know, for a long time, I tried different um, different textures, different uh, materials on that logo, and nothing really worked, um, you know, to being what I like. And now for the texture itself, uh, I actually have uh, worked with uh, friends of mine who do make meteorite jewelry. Yeah. So they make meteorite rings, which is fucking crazy. Beautiful stuff. You can see all kinds of like different meteorites. They have different different uh, patterns. I do have those textures. Please let me know if you guys are interested. Let me just show you the meteorite uh, render um, maps. They are huge. So we're basically talking about how big is this texture? Uh, details basically a 10k texture 300 dpi super detailed textures look at that i mean this is insane this is the level of details we're talking about guys like 
if you want this as a texture pack I will put it on my Gumroad and you guys gonna be able to grab it for a really really good price so yeah I have this amazing uh, amazing textures that you probably can't really get in uh, anywhere else and I use it for the logo the logo is uh, in fact the you know the texture of meteorite it looks fucking dope so that's it really and when the thing was done i sent it to my friend reflection nebula and he did his magic he did the sound and basically made the whole thing come to life so please do check him out listen to his music if you like uh, his music he also has like uh, awesome merch you can support him if you would like but like check him out and um, yeah support him if you like that kind of stuff um, that's it it's been Edgar with you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me and checking out the breakdown of Reflection Nebula's uh, logo bumper and I hope to see you again soon peace